Welcome to IGM Guru. IGM Guru is one of the global leading online training and certification provider for IT expert by the skilled IT gurus to help them achieve their professional goals. And now let's start with the next part, which is our deep learning. So, uh, deep learning is also the part of AI and uh, the thing is in the deep learning basically what we are doing is we are trying to mimic the human neuron system everyone is uh, we we everyone know about that uh, everyone knows this thing that uh, human brain is the most complex machine and uh, in human brain we have billions of neurons and the way and and uh, the neurons is is responsible for uh, processing the information that is coming from the senses different senses through the eye uh, skin ear whatever the information is coming from the senses they process this information and take the take the signal to the uh, different part of the brain uh, to take some kind of a decision right so what happen is our mathematicians want to build a similar architecture or you can say that our researcher wants to build a similar architectures which can mimic the human neuron human biological neuron so if i talk about a human biological neuron how it looks like so in this one we have like three parts majorly we have the three parts one is the axon terminal so axon terminal is a kind of a portion of the neuron this represent the one neuron axon terminal is the one part of the my neuron which is responsible to take the inputs so this is taking the input and uh, then i have the this middle part which is the axon this is the axon terminal and this is the axon so axon is the portion which is responsible for processing the information processing the information means that every neuron has some capabilities every neuron has like some capabilities guys and uh, this neurons is responsible to process only that information uh, i don't know whether you are aware or not so in human brain guys like uh, few portion of the uh, one portion of the brain is only stored the memory one portion of the brain is only stored the color information one portion of the brain is responsible to find the uh, whether it's a 2d image or the 3d picture or whatever the like uh, uh, color intensity you can say that one like so we have a different different portion in the brain and that is the collection of the neuron and they are only doing a specific task it's not like that a neuron is the multitask neuron is doing a single task for which the neuron is designed so now we have the axon so this axon is responsible for processing the information then after that we have the dendrites so dendrites has this kind of a structure and this dendrites is is responsible to pass the information to the next neuron so if i show you the two neurons so this is how the two neurons looks like means that two neuron means that this is the one neuron and the dendrites of the the previous neuron mix with the axon terminal of the next neuron and pass the information these are the electric signals basically these are passed to the uh, next neuron and next neuron will further perform his action 
and pass to the next neuron. So this is how it creates a very complex architecture in human brain. So now our mathematician discuss these things with the neurobiologist and they try to understand the behavior. So the behavior is, is this one that the neuron is getting some input then we have something which process the input and then we are process we are passing this input to the next neuron so we understood this processing of the neuron and then our mathematicians start exploring the functions which have the same nature they try to explain they try to search that whether there is a possibility of the one function or the multiple functions which if I if we add them in a particular order or if I use them independently it is possibility it is an possibility that they work in the same manner the way that uh, our biological neuron works so then when they search out so we found some functions and we call this function as the activation functions. So the, the use of the activation function is, is just to uh, create the architecture for the artificial neurons. So what we are doing is like we have some functions like uh, sigmoid, which is the nature of uh, uh, sigmoid function is, it looks like this one guys. The word function says that for the negative values of uh, very very high negative it will almost zero. When x is zero it will be 0.5 and for the higher value it will approach to 1. So value will always oscillate between 0 to 1. Sigmoid function value is 1 by 1 plus e to power minus x. This is my sigmoid function. Similarly we have a function which is the ReLU function. ReLU function says that for a negative value of x I always be 0. Negative value 0. Negative value 0. But when x is positive it will be y is equal to x. And then we have the tenets function. Tenets function is always oscillate between plus 1 to minus 1. Like these things. Then we have the leaky relu. Leaky relu says that okay, instead of the making the zero, I will make the alpha x like these things. So these are the these are the activation functions which we use to create a artificial neuron. So if I talk about from the deep learning point point of view, so activation functions are the functions which increase the complexity in my model or you can say that it is used to make my model learnable and complex. Complex means that when my model is is uh, complex definitely my accuracy will uh, will increase and if I talk about a neuron if I talk about a artificial neuron so it's not the neuron it is the artificial neuron. If I talk about an artificial neuron, so it will take the input x1, x2, x3. For example, we are getting the input x1, x2, x3. So what happening is, in the first part of this artificial neuron, we are doing the linear combination of input along with the weight w1 w2 w3 so now the question comes that what is this w1 w2 w3 so let's understand first these things through the our uh, neuron concepts so now let me take you the very real example 
So the thing is, let first the question comes that what is this W1, W2, W3? Let's first discuss this thing from the biological neuron point of view. So the thing is, now, now you are in, in front of your laptop. And I'm assuming that you guys are working from home. <laughs> I'm assuming that guys, maybe you're working from office also. So although like whether, whether you're working from home or office, now your focus is on the laptop, but still you can see the wall behind your laptop. You can see the, uh, you can see the, uh, some items placed on your table. So you can see these things, right? But because your eyes is process, your eyes is passing this information to your brain. Okay, your eyes is giving you the picture like uh, in, in your laptop, then behind uh, this wall and items placed on the table. But your brain is neglecting this information. Am I right? Your brain is only focusing on the your laptop screen. Although you can see these things, right? But your brain is ignoring this information. So the same thing we are doing it by putting the weight to my information. Because X1, X2, X3 is my information. It's not necessary that X1, X2 and X3 are equally important. We have to adjust this information by assigning a weight W1, W2 and W3 and this is what we, my model will learn during the training process. That which information I need to ignore and which information I put some kind of a more importance. Okay, so this is the concept of like uh, weight concept to assign the weight to the inputs to get the uh, to uh, to get that which information we need to focus on. So now in the first part of this neuron, we will have the W1 X1 plus W2 X2 plus W3 X3. This is the first part of the neuron. And now in the second part of the neuron, we will pass this information, pass this linear combination values. We can use, we use the bias as well, guys. Bias is just adjusted the noise. So we have this information and we pass this information to the activation function. So this is the symbol of the activation function. So we pass this information to the activation function and activation function will give me the one output. And this output will further pass to the my another neurons and do the same thing. I will show you the architecture. So now the question comes that why if I, if I don't use the activation function what will happen? If I don't use the activation function it will only the linear combination of the uh, linear combination of the your weight and the inputs. It will not become a complex. Your model will simple a a linear model. Your model will not become a a model that we have in the deep learning. A lot of problems will be there. So if you do these things, you are using a very high value, right? And then high value will pass to this one neuron. Again, a very high value will create. So a lot of the, a lot of benefits of the activation function. One benefit is the increasing the non-linearity in the model. Non-linearity means that if I have a only linear line, like for example. Uh, I want to use a, I want to build a classification between uh, I have this thing, let me just show you. Yeah, this one. So I want to build a, a classification between the green dots and the red dots. So if I use the simple, uh, as you mentioned, that if I remove the, uh, if I remove the activation functions, it will be a single line only. The separator will be a single separator, am I right? 
because it will be line as a separator yes right yes so yes. do you think that in let me just uh, 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 let me just highlight this picture also so that uh, you can see this picture right yeah. on on 20 hidden neurons no classifier can generate this kind of uh, ha, the, the, the thing is that a state line is not the not possible to differentiate this class we need a a complex a non linear classifier to differentiate the green dot from red dots this is the main concept that i want to try to uh, explain here that activation the purpose of the activation function is to add the non linearity because if i don't use the uh, activation function it will be a linear separator and it is not necessary that a linear separator will be the a right one a, a good separator for your data a linear separator is a is a simple separator a simple separator which is not work in the real time scenarios if you are working on the problem where you have the complex data so we need a non linear separator because uh, this image classification is is nothing like we have very clear cut boundary between the uh, between the two type of class like for example i want to differentiate between cat and dog so so cat is also have the four leg dog is also have the four leg same ear same nose so we have the few feature which is different otherwise uh, if it see the category so so both are almost have the same features am i right so we need a non linear separable separator so this is where the we use the activation I means this is the purpose of the activation function to add the non linearity and build the complex model clear guys so uh, now we have seen these things so let's understand some kind of a terminology uh let's understand some kind of a terminology in the uh the terminology that we use in the deep learning so in the deep learning we have the first layer we call it as a input layer and when we have the data like we have the inputs like x1 x2 x3 for example i have the input vector which contain the three values x1 x2 and x3 based on my input vector i will add these values this is my x1 x2 and x3 now this x1 will pass to the each neuron present in the hidden layer so the first let me write down from the scratch okay let me write down from the scratch so i have the three inputs so i use the three neuron you can say that not the neuron but it's the input layer part so x1 x2 and the x3 then i am creating the next layer which will be called as a hidden layer so i am using the four hidden layers so x1 uh, four hidden layers so now the thing is each input of the x1 will pass to the each next neuron so x1 will pass to the each next uh, all these four neurons similarly x2 information will pass to the each next neuron and along with the weight also so some weight will be assigned here so now it is not necessary that we have we should have only one hidden layers hidden layers can be anything or and can any size so this time i'm using the three hidden layers and now the same thing is so this time this neuron will generate the output and this output of particular from this hidden layers will become the input for the next layer so output will generated and this will be, go to the next neuron output get generated this will go to the next neuron output got generated this will go to the next neuron and then i will use the output layer 
so based on my type of problems i can use the one neuron if it is a single out a single input or if it is a multi class classification okay so now like we have typically the three part one is the input layers then hidden layers i mentioned that there will be a one single input layer then hidden layers can be one or multiples and then we will have the output layer which will be again the single output layer so if i talk about that how the things are work i'm again uh, covering the overview part so how the things work uh, how the model train now the question comes that how the model trains so i mentioned that uh, my input is x1 x2 x3 so these are my weights like for example this neuron when i'm passing this information x1 x2 x3 i assign the weight w1 w2 and w3 which is nothing but a weightage to my input x1 x2 and x3 now the question comes that uh, like i start with a random value because i don't know whether the x1 is okay whether the x1 is should be like for example i assign the value x1 as a 0.1 sorry w1 as a 0.1 w2 as a 0.3 and w2 as a 0.112 for example so corresponding i am just giving the weights to the x1 x2 and x3 but i don't know because this is a random values these are just random values i don't know whether it is a good for us so the thing is that i have the w1 w2 w3 i assign these things x1 with x2 and x3 and perform all the calculation and now perform the prediction and prediction comes that okay this is my two category cat and dog so basically in the cat and dog we will get the probability so it's saying that sorry uh, it's saying that it's saying that i am 0.6% probability that it is the cat and 0.4 probability is is a dog i found that it is a cat okay so actual is also it is a cat but when it is a cat so it, this probability should be close to 1 and this probability should be close to 0 it means that my model is working but not that much efficiently so what i will do is my prediction is 0.6 and uh, 0.4 but actually should be 1 and 0 i have this is the actual uh, this is the predicted values from the model and this is the actual values i will calculate the loss we have some loss functions we will use calculate the loss loss incurred by the model and then go back and start updating the weight and mm. we will use the algorithms back propagation and back propagation is the algorithms which give the a huge breakthrough in the deep learning deep learning is not a not a new things guys it's not like the deep learning suddenly comes in the picture like if we talk about the deep learning so deep learning the main deep learning comes in the last uh, uh, in the uh, 10 to 12 years but it's not like uh, that deep learning was just start working people the, the researchers start working on the deep learning is only the last 10 to 12 years deep learning is also started from the 1970s 1960 when the ai came in the market first time so first time the ai came in the in the in the market is 1955 so one of the researcher uh, give a, a a a kind of a concept of artificial intelligence can we create a machine which we can think like a human then slowly slowly we start the things and maybe you also have seen this movie imitation game we heard uh, the alan turing develop a machine to decode the hitler messages and uh, that that machine was the kind of a game changer in the second world war because otherwise hitler is was very has the very had the powerful army but the problem is that uh, 
uh, I mean Hitler like the uh, in in the this side England side so so they have the they had the Alan Turing and uh, instead of just uh, instead of just decode the ever so the problem was what was the what was happening is that uh, uh, the time taken by the person to decode the Hitler messages was very high, very like time consuming maybe like one or two days they take to decode the Hitler message and in this time like maybe they they attack on a particular region so the problem is that uh, because of these things uh, they were not able to save the army the thing is that uh, now the Alan Turing mentioned that okay so so simple decoder decoding part is not okay let's create a machine which will train on the data which you already decoded and now build a machine so that next time a message will come it can decode automatically so that machine is is now got a capability by the previous messages that what kind of a kind of a concept what kind of a uh, what kind of a decoded uh, labels that we ha- they have so after that they 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 start using this machine to decode the messages within the few like few minutes and then they saved their persons so the thing is like uh, uh, the back prop- I, I was talking about the back propagation so back propagation is a is a very important algorithms in the deep learning so so uh, to update the weight he, they use the gradient descent algorithms behind the scene we use the like in the back propagation we use the gradient descent algorithms to update the weight okay so i'm not going the deep of this gradient descent and the back propagation basically we are just going in the backward direction and update the weight to to uh, uh, get the outcome more close to the actual output Thanks for watching the video. For full course, please visit www.igmguru.com and enroll today.